All right, so let's finally draw one of these out. For this example, we're going to use the normal distribution. You've probably seen it before. For now, we don't need to truly understand where it comes from, a series of Bernoulli trials, but we're just going to make the relationship between this and its CDF. So we're going to use this relationship to drive how we draw this graph. Now, we start off with a very low accumulated area. The area right here might actually be zero. As we increase, we're adding a little amount of area and a little bit larger amount of area and a little bit larger. And as we increase, that area gets larger and larger and larger. So we might start off very small. But as we increase going right, our area is increasing almost exponentially, if you will. Nothing to do with the actual exponential distribution, but it's gaining area faster and faster and faster. It's not linear. We're not doing a straight line. It's increasing as we go. And we increase, we're increasing area this whole time. Our area is getting larger and larger and larger until we hit this point here. I'm gonna have to redraw this a little bit. Now once we hit this point here, our function won't start to decrease. It's not like we're taking area away. We're not gonna go down for any reason, but our area slows down, right? We're still adding a lot, but we're adding less and less and less each time. And because we're adding less and less and less, my slope is going to decrease. And we add less and less and less until we're adding almost zero. And that's why this begins to taper off, because as x comes along, I'm adding so little that it's no longer increasing. Now we see that on here. We're increasing until we hit the mean, the most likely value, and then we're decreasing the area that we add. Now, terminology-wise, our CDF is still increasing. Remember, it must always be non-decreasing. It must always either stay the same or increase. So let's check if these three truths hold for the CDF that we just drew. First of all, it must be non-decreasing. This axis can never go down. That is, any given x value must be greater than or equal to the previous x value. Do we see that on here? Is there any scenarios where an increasing x value yields a decreasing CDF value? The answer is no. Even though we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller here, it's either greater than or equal to still here. So this holds true. Second one, the limit as x approaches negative infinity all the way on the left approaches zero. Is that true in this case? Here, we didn't draw any negative x values. We could very well. We can have, for example, in that previous one, we can have negative temperatures. That's not outside the bounds. We can never have a negative probability, but we can have a negative temperature. In this scenario, the probability of um, Arizona having negative 200 degrees Celsius is basically zero. It's, it's so close to zero that as we approach negative infinity, Arizona having negative infinity degrees, the value is zero. And so that holds true on our CDF as well. We're adding such a small value that it's, for all intents and purposes, zero. Now, the third and final truth. The limit as x approaches positive infinity equals one. And this is another really important part of CDFs. We said we can never have a probability greater than one. What will be the value what is this value here? And the answer will always be one. Once it hits this point, there's no more increasing. We're never gonna go higher again. And so the probability of the accumulated area up until this point is equal to one. In other words, the probability of the temperature in Arizona being less than 10,000 degrees is 100%. 
Now, technically, it might be 99.99999%, but for all intents and purposes, and that's what the limit takes account of, remember, for all intents and purposes, the limit approaches one. And so that's what this tells us here. If we plugged in an X of 10,000 degrees, we'd hit this point on our CDF, which is an accumulated probability of one. So it matches all three of these truths, which means that this is a valid CDF. So, we took care of this qualitatively today. I want to give you a sneak peek of how we would solve this actually mathematically. And that will be in one of my following videos. We'll look at an example of a normal distribution, and we'll look at an example of what we drew earlier. Of it's just kind of a random function, and we're asked to find the CDF, or the probability, up until a point. So if we were asked to find the probability of a specific temperature occurring on this graph, mathematically, this would look like the following. All we have to do is the integral from negative infinity up until the x value that we care about. Now, because we know that the CDF of negative infinity is zero, there's zero percent of being less than negative 10,000 degrees in Arizona, we know that that value is equal to zero. And so all we're left with is the CDF where we plugged in the x that we cared about. So the probability of the temperature being less than a certain x is whatever that x value is in our CDF, and we can plug that in mathematically. And of course, this gives way to the following theorem. I'll let you pause the video, think through, this doesn't require any math, think through what this answer is. All right, let's check it out. We already know that f of negative infinity is zero. f of positive infinity, in other words, the probability of all events occurring, is of course equal to one, 100% 1 chance of it all occurring. So this will always equal one. In my next video, we're gonna look at some of the mathematics behind this. For now, I hope this was a good primer for you to truly understand what is a cumulative distribution function. I think looking at the definitions of the words helps us understand it. Looking at the three conditions that makes a function a CDF also helps us understand and prove to ourselves that it's true. Next, we compared a PDF to a CDF. We answered the question what each one tells us and why each one is important. And then we drew the graph given a given distribution, we can draw the accumulated probability of that distribution. We proved to ourselves that these three rules hold true for the CDF of the normal distribution. And finally, we looked at a little bit of high level mathematics to prove to ourselves again that the bounds negative infinity and positive infinity are zero and one. If you like seeing this kind of content, please subscribe. If you want to see more of this in the future, please leave a comment down below letting me know some of the topics that you want to learn more about and be able to understand truly and fundamentally rather than just being able to plug in the numbers.